Hi, I'm Bob Rankin. Welcome to the wonderful world of acrylics. Today we're going to be emphasizing uh, what transparencies can do for you. What a great pleasure it is to work with transparencies. If you'll take a look at the painting in the background, this is a painting that I just finished called Sound Wave, and it's based on juxtaposing the energy of the waves on one side of the coastline uh, against the serenity of the sound on the other. But to capture the transparency of the water, I really wanted to use colors that would just flood the canvas. So if you were going to try something like this, the first question would be, what type of color do I use? When I'm going to that rack of paint in the art store where there are 50 million thousand paints, which ones do I choose? Well, one of the greatest ways of doing that and finding out what really works for you is to simply experiment. Every paint has a different weight to it. For example, primary yellow or cadmium yellow light, cadmium itself is a very, very, very heavy pigment. Now, on the other end of that spectrum, you have more translucent or transparent colors like thalo blue, you have thalo green, you have southern ocean blue from Matisse, which is an incredible color, and then you have diox purple, which will really flood the canvas as well. All the earth tones seem to have a much heavier pigment to it. For example, burnt umber is one of those that you can play off and mix in with a transparent color, and if they're still wet, they have a tendency to separate from each other. And a lot of artists will use that separation as an integral part of their painting method. So the way that I get and like to start off with when I'm doing a transparency is I have a spray bottle. This is just an old spick and span container. And I really flood that surface with a lot of water. Then I'll show you. I'm just going to use a little bit of this cadmium yellow light right out of the tube. And I want you to look at that. Now, it's staying still, okay? So what that means, even though it's surrounded by water, there's a little bit of transparency coming out to the edge. But look what happens when I use thalo blue, thalo green. I'm going to bring in a little bit of diox purple. I'm going to use a wet brush here. Just barely touching that thalo blue. Look at that wonderful blossom that performs for itself. Now these are hard to control, but they will, if you look at this edge of water here, they will stick with the edge of the water. So you can use that edge to your advantage as well. Whoa! And what I love about it is, is absolutely great fun just to watch to see what happens in its own right. Bringing in some of this great ocean blue from Matisse. See what happens when that floods. Maybe bring a little bit of diox purple into play. See if that stays still or how that really... That also blossoms as well. Look at those great color blossoms right there. Now, in addition to that, you can come back in with some of the heavier pigments that we had mentioned earlier about working with burnt umber. So what would happen if I brought some burnt umber into play? This has a tendency to repel the color that you've already put down. It resists it. Look at how it pushes and separates that other color. Love that. It looks like cells that are gathering or something. Now, for the most part, that would dry as long as you didn't change the placement of the paper or something. It would dry just like that. Uh, what I love are these blossoms that are starting to happen here. And it really takes a good five to ten minutes before you actually see the final product. What's going to happen there? Now, a lot of artists, especially contemporary artists and abstract artists, have been using this combination of heavy pigment mixed in with transparencies for many, many years. And look what happens with that yellow, that wonderful cadmium yellow light, and how it pushes the more transparent, translucent colors to the side. You get a terrific separation there. Now, these artists, these contemporary artists, I'm one of those fine folks, um, 
will use that. They'll let that first design set up. I did one of these earlier. And look what happens when you come back in, still keeping and using transparencies. For example, if I wanted to go with that ocean blue, I'll just use a lot of water, a little bit of pigment, and it'll create a wonderful translucency. So you can still maintain that beautiful blossoming that you had earlier. And so we're looking through these many different layers of paint. So have fun with it, experiment with it. I think you'll try something that's brand new that you might be incorporate into a whole new style of painting for yourself. I'm Bob Rankin, keep painting.